sleep, yeah See all this time that I spent, all these nights I ain't sleep Those are things you can never take away, take away See all these moves I done made, all this music I made Those are things you can never take away I'm here with my man Jim Starr, straight out of Long Island. The only island he was from is the strong one. I just want to know um, about this Open Skies that you just dropped with me, man. Uh, tell me a little something about it. Open Skies is my, my latest album that I put out. You know, I got it on the streets right now. It's a CD, and I got it on iTunes right now. Basically, it consists of a lot of hip-hop music slash R&D that I put out. Mm -hmm. The myth, the Marvel legend himself. Okay. Tell me about your relationship with him as far as he's playing with the hard target. Oh, yeah, hard target. A lot of collaborations, a lot of shows, a lot of, a lot of work. Y'all the original one with the money too. Mr. Uh, Ryan Fleming of Hard Target, you know what right. I'm saying? Shout out to Hard Target, the group, but also shout out my homeboy Ryan Fleming, like I said, for the last five, six years, we've been riding hard mm -hmm. music and uh, promoting each other, helping each other out, you know, just basically partners in the game, you know what I mean? So, you're from New York originally, originally. and then you moved to Spring Hill? Yeah. What is it about Spring Hill? There's so many dope MCs out of Spring Hill. I don't know, man. It's, it's like crazy, like my man Shannon Sunday, who y'all saw in the early episode, is you know, went from Jersey, Spring Hill, and then my man Fader is from Spring Hill. And what is it about Spring Hill that nurses only go to the It wasn't like, you know what I'm saying, I, I looked online and I spoke out with the Ellis Rapids and stuff like that. I saw some people on the map. That was just fake for me, you know what I'm saying? I was just, my mother and my daughter moved down here when I was up in New York. And, you know, I tried to get close to her, to my daughter, and my kids. So I figured I'd come down to Florida and Spring Hill just happened to be the place where I, you know, I landed. So, you know what I mean? After that, I'm the type of person from New York where I grind, you know what I mean? If I got a product, if I got a TV, if I got something, I'm gonna hit the street. I'm gonna hit the barber shop, I'm gonna hit everywhere, get my, get my sound out there. You know? When I was doing that, a lot of people in Spring Hill was like, oh wow, people don't really do that around here that much, you know what I'm saying? And my name kind of caught buzz around the town, and this guy, our target, he was a popular artist at the time. You know, everyone was like, oh, you gotta check him out, you gotta check him out, and that's how it came about pretty much. You know? Wow, well, we'll recognize it real like they always say. Five years, six years later, that's what you got, you know what I mean? Cool. So, uh, who's some of the people who like grew up, like listening to? Hip hop wise? Oh, man. Nas was a big influence. Uh, definitely. Nas, Public Enemy, actually came from my neighborhood where I grew up at. Um, okay. I love Derek B and Rock Kim. I love, I love Big Daddy Kane. You know, I'm moving up to the. 90s, I'm Mob Deep, the AZs, Wu Tang, you know. Um, the list goes on, man. I, can, I mean, I can name a, a hundred rappers that influenced me to start rapping, really. But, you know, this day and age, you know, I kind of respect a lot of underground music more than the mainstream now. Mm -hmm. It's a little different than, than when I was growing up. I mean, Who's I your favorite um, artist? Member of the Wu. Wu? Wu? After you mind. That's tough, man. That's tough because I'm like. What I liked about the Wu is that they had so many different kind of styles within that group. Mm -hmm. Like you had Ray, who was considered a lyricist, you had Meth, who was considered a lyricist, then you had Ghost, who was kind of an off the wall lyricist. So it's kind of like, then you had ODB, who was just kind of like a wildcat, but a lyricist at that. So it's kind of like, I like the Wu for what they all brought to the table, so it's kind of hard to just single out and say, I guess you could say Ray Kwan probably. Really? I'd probably, I'd probably go with Ray. Ray is ill. You know what I'm saying? My, I have to say, my top, my yeah, like favorite. Yeah, Wu's favorite. Wu's favorite. Killer, oh, I man. love Ghost. Cause I I'm listening to yeah. Ghost Face there, yeah. and I'm like, what the hell did he just say? Ghost is sick. And then Ghost is another. Ghost, is, Ghost read comic books. Not, yeah. even, not just because yeah. the Tony Stark's yeah. in his name. And, That's our era. But, but he like, he, I mean, hearing him say, like, yo, it's rough out here. I'm going to stop selling drugs so much to the point. I'm going to start slinging these comics and getting this money so I don't have to kill niggas no more with this. this yeah. What do you so guys? Clean. What do you guys think about Action Bronson? I think he's dope, and I think he sounds a lot like Ghostface Killer. He sounds a hell of a lot like Ghostface. I mean, I can't tell the difference. And I asked my boy that, and he didn't agree. I'm like, dude, he sounds like 
But it's not. He, he's still original. He, I, can't, I can't tell him apart. My boy, my boy from Harlem said he's some. I can't tell him apart. I love, I love Action Bronson. He's dope. Especially that new, dope. new joint he got with Coming to America. Yeah, yeah. Thing in the hey, shout out to Action Bronson, man. Shout out to Action Bronson. Cool, 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 cool. So, hit me at the I ain't got it, but God bless you. And, you know. Check it out. Each one, teach one. Thanks for being here, Jim Star. And uh, anything you like to drop the world with? Yeah, definitely. Hey, y'all be on the lookout for my new album coming out, The Lost Link. That's coming out sometime in May. Still working on the finishing product right now. Got a couple new videos coming out. One second. You're naming your album The Lost Link? Yes, sir. Did you pass this to uh, <laughs> Upper Office? <laughs> Yeah, right here. Control. <laughs> what, what do we talk about, man? The Lost Link. What does right. the Lost Link mean? The Lost Link? Yes. Google it. No, I understand that. What does it mean to you? To me, it means that the full chain, any chain that's put together, has, is put together with links. If there's a link missing to it, it's not complete. The Lost Link, be on the lookout for it. I'm with MC Finance. Yes, sir. For the Peter Parker. Is it Peter Parker Chronicles? No, the Peter Parker Project. Peter Parker Project. The dopest mix he is out this year. How's Appreciate it going, man? It's going good, man. Excited. Excited to be here. That's one award. Where'd you get the concept for the, uh, the whole Peter Parker thing? Oh, man. Um, actually, like, on contrary to what everybody believes, um, it wasn't about the comic books at first. I grew up on comic books. I grew up reading, but what it was, I started doing photography, uh, I got into photography, and nobody in Tampa knew about my music. I don't know, Big Line, from BigLinePromo.com, shout out to Big Line, he, uh, was like, nobody knows you're, 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 you're that dope with music. So, we kind of came up with the concept, we used to laugh about it, it was just a joke that we had Peter Parker, Peter Parker, and we released the Gentleman's Club, and, you know, we started getting followers, and we said it's time. So we uh, made the Peter Parker project, and I wrote it in a fashion of where, you know, it was real personal to me. It was almost like I was at war with myself, you know, and, and I was at war with how great I was and how great I could be, you know, and I, and I kept going back to, well, maybe I need to be Peter Parker, you know what I'm saying? But ultimately, you need to be the hero, so cool. This guy right here is a renaissance man. Um, tell me about all the different pieces of media that you're involved with. Uh, photography, videography, uh, I write books. Uh, actually, you just, you know, um, you know, edited one of my books that I'm going to be putting out, Royalty. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know, I do so much. I have a cartoon that I eight eighty characters. I haven't really publicly announced it. This is the first time I ever told anybody about it outside my school. Okay. But I, I do everything. I, I can't help it. We did a documentary with No No, mm -hmm. knowing me both guys, the professional boxer, shout out to knowing me. And a video Yeah, apparently. Right I'm sorry now. if I suck. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I do a lot. My brain it just works like that. I can't you know, just sit in one spot and, and not be creative. I have to find outlets to be creative. Okay. Dope. Um, Me and my man Ryan here, we, 
we got a common interest. We, we both mess with comic books. <laughs> I'm a big Marvel head myself. I've messed with a little bit of DC, but I'm mostly a Marvel head. Yeah, I don't like DC. Yeah, yeah. Batman's cool. Yeah, Batman. Batman. Yeah. Yeah. I love Batman and Teen Titans. Yeah. Other than that, I don't really mess with DC. All right, here, here I got to I'm gonna interview you. Which, which Marvel character, mm -hmm. superhero, yeah. and which DC character has the most popular villains? Spider-Man probably has the most popular villains out of Marvel. What, what do you think about with DC? Batman. Dead on. Because the Joker, the Riddler. Do you watch Gotham? I don't watch I watch like the trailer and stuff. You have to watch Gotham because it, it talks about the roots of his I see the Joker uh, trailer. That was dope. The Joker was the baddest one. The yeah. Riddler is like an EMT guy, a forensic scientist. Oh, really? That's and he just throws all these weird riddles out about you know, you know dead bodies. Like, yeah. I like DC. Uh, I like DC movies for the fact that it, mm -hmm. they refuse to, to be clean, uh do any comedian stuff. They'll have like little comic relief or whatever soft movies, right. but they want to be taken seriously. And all the DC movies, if you notice, know, like uh, the whole uh, Christopher Nolan, uh, the Superman, it's all serious. It's like mm -hmm. trying to be like straight face, you know what I mean? And uh, Avengers and all the Marvel stuff that's real comedic, you know what I mean? That's I hate the uh, I hate the shield. Uh, ABC, you know, never watch the teaser. Yeah, Mr. Jack. What's that Flash? Kick ass. Now I watch that. Flash. Watch the Flash. They're bringing Blue Beetle on it. The Blue Beetle on. Uh, Gorilla Grodd on Flash. I saw Gorilla. I saw Gorilla. They're taking, like, more like it's a Batman film. Who? Grodd. Gorilla Grodd? Yeah, from the Legion of the Dead. He's on fucking Flash. He's on Flash. I see the trailer for that, too. That was Turtles, Power Rangers, all that. G-Force. And what's fun? 
what's funny is that you just said it too about your son with the Power Rangers. Mm -hmm. Up until my daughter was like two years old, three years old, yeah. we had Netflix. We lived on Netflix. We were right. poor stuff. Right. And my daughter, I showed her Neo. Uh, it was like Power Rangers Neo Force or, or Zeo or Zeo Force or Turbo. Uh -huh. I don't know. I stopped after Mighty Morphin. Right. She, <laughs> Gangster, OG. Uh, no, uh, and she's like fell in love with it. We watched it over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you know what I'm gonna do? Because when I was a kid, I had like the uh, the original ones, like they flipped and the heads came out. You know, they had the uh, Megazord and all that. And I was like, I'm gonna buy these for my daughter. But I, it's nostalgic where I want them. But I'm gonna get away with it with my old lady because it's for the daughter. She loves right. it. And I went buying up all these Power Ranger toys. I got the Megazord brand new in the box for like 50 bucks. And from there, it just spiraled out of control. Where I just like came obsessed with like toy collecting and stuff, getting back into it. And that's around when I met. You. Around when I met you, right? When's that? Jump starts behind the camera, by the way. I was collecting. I uh, started collecting. Uh, I met you before you were collecting. Yeah, it was like around when Peyton was like two or three years old. Yeah. I'm interviewing Jump Star. You're doing, <laughs> you're doing that Warcraft stuff. That oh, craft stuff. <laughs> World craft. From, uh, early episode. True believers, you probably seen Sham and Sam back on here. But Sham, yeah. his symbol is the, the, the skull, like the, the Punisher. So my, my son is on YouTube watching it. It's like, Dad, just saw the interview you did with Frank Castle. Yeah. Like, <laughs> but my, my son is so so brilliant. It's, it's crazy to be random. Like, the TV repairman will come by. Yeah. My son would be like, you look just like Kingpin. <laughs> I'd be so embarrassed. <laughs> but, but it's funny, funny as hell. Bro. Yeah, it's funny dope, as hell. But, uh, Love comic books, man. And Riley, uh, I said Riley. Ryan. Ryan. <laughs> Ryan. He can hard. name everybody in the X Men. He can't remember my name. Ryan. Hard target. Hard target. Hey, I fuck with you, hard target. I appreciate it, man. Pause. Thank you for having me out here and shit. God bless you. Right now we're getting outrageous. Yeah.